Hi, I'm Elliot Tapper from the Liver Center at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. The title of my paper in CGH is, A Quality Improvement Initiative Reduces the 30-Day Rate of Readmission for Patients with Cirrhosis. We chose to conduct the study for a few reasons. First, our primary goal is to improve the quality of care that we provide our patients. Second, in 2010, we had learned that the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services was planning on penalizing hospitals with excessive 30-day readmissions. So we naturally thought about the question whether the quality of care that we provide our patients could reduce the risk of readmission. So before I tell you about the results, it's worth discussing the definitions of terms and methodology. We're here on the unit that we have for patients with decompensated cirrhosis and transplant. It's staffed by a hepatologist, a transplant hepatologist, four residents, a fellow, and a staff of excellent nurses who are very familiar with the specific needs of patients with cirrhosis. Now, quality of care can mean many things, but for our purposes, it means standardization of care, decreased practice variation, and universalization of prophylactic measures. So we created a protocol to address each of these facets. First, we wanted to make sure that all prophylactic measures were being provided. This, for us, meant rifaximin for secondary prophylaxis of hepatic encephalopathy, SVP prophylaxis, DVT prophylaxis, and beta blocker prophylaxis for variceal hemorrhage. In addition, we had noticed that many nurses were providing extra doses of lactulose in the first day of admission for patients with hepatic encephalopathy, and the result was a relatively more rapid clearance in mental status. So we sought to universalize that practice by increasing the dose and frequency of lactulose for the first 24 hours of admission for overt hepatic encephalopathy. Finally, we sought to reduce medication errors by instituting a daily medication reconciliation rounds. The way that we implemented this at first was through a checklist. Each day on rounds, the checklist would be performed and adherence would be indicated by initialing a sheet that was placed into every patient's chart. But the problem was that adherence was variable and it required constant upkeep. So after several months, we folded each element of the protocol into the electronic ordering system and health record. And what this meant is that when a patient with decompensated cirrhosis was admitted to the service, the electronic ordering system would prompt each of the prophylactic measures that were indicated for the patient. And the specific dosing protocol for lactulose, for example, was set as the default for any clinician wishing to order lactulose for hepatic encephalopathy. In addition, we created templated notes for the house staff to use that would prompt for them the initiation of each element of the protocol. Now, the way that we compared the results was a pre-post study design. So we had the rate of readmission in the checklist phase and the subsequent electronic phase, and we compared both to the year prior to initiation of the protocol, a control period. Now, each period had between 470 to 640 admissions. In addition, we compared trends in readmissions on our service to the hospitalist service within our own hospital as a local control, and also compared the rate of readmissions for patients with cirrhosis at a neighboring institution. Now, the important results from our paper are threefold. First, we saw a decrease in readmissions in the electronic phase by 40% adjusting for confounding factors. Now, we did not see that decrease in the checklist phase, and that decrease was unique when we compared it to the hospitalist service and the patients with cirrhosis at the other hospital. Second, we found that the use of rifaximin as well as secondary prophylaxis of SBP with antibiotics on discharge was associated with a significant independent redu reduction in risk for readmission. Finally, we found that adherence to the lactulose protocol and the electronic phase itself was associated with a 1.34 fewer day length of stay for patients with overt hepatic encephalopathy. When we take a step back and think of the big picture takeaways from these data, there are three. One, the quality of care that we provide our patients has a measurable impact on their outcomes. Two, freedom from rehospitalization is a major goal for both providers and patients 
in managing hepatic encephalopathy. Prescription of rifaximin and early high-dose lactulose when the patient is admitted are two tools in service of that goal. Finally, checklists are difficult to maintain with variable adherence. Electronic decision supports, on the other hand, overcome this obstacle and are a promising tool for, for clinicians wishing to standardize care and decrease practice variation. Thank you for your attention.